Hey guys, Chad of Fear Media Systems. Today we're out in Plano, Texas, bright and early, so we can get a start on our day. Uh, we're going to be doing a full Arachnus networking uh, with uh, a two 700 series access points inside, as well as one 700 outdoor access point for the backyard. We're going to be upgrading their JVC projector, uh, new Denon 3600 receivers uh, in their living room and their media room, new uh, Sony. 900H TV in their living room, full control four system uh, for universal remotes, as well as control in a few other aspects, music in their backyard, living room, media room, etc. cetera. Uh, we're gonna show you the process along the way. Please leave us some comments down below if you have any questions uh, and wanna see anything in the future. And please don't forget to subscribe and give, give us a big thumbs up. Thanks guys. All right, guys, so first things we're doing here is we're going to be installing the Arachnus Outdoor Access Point. This is the AN700APOAC. It's an outdoor rated access point. Uh, it is super humid today out here. There's dew everywhere. Uh, this could be in direct rain. Uh, Exposed to the elements is a fantastic access point, and it's super powerful. So it can cover his whole property in the backyard here. Uh, the customer had a pre-existing coax line right here. Open it up to see what was in here. And uh, fortunately, there's no uh, ethernet. Sometimes we do find that uh, there is ethernet run uh, and it's just not being uh, utilized. Uh, in this case, was able to uh, cut into the gang box here a little bit, expose some, uh, make the hole bigger, and was able to locate in the attic right above us where exactly this cable is going to or this box is. So was able to um, get a rod down here and I've got it right here. So what I'm going to do now is tape our cable. Uh, you can see this right here. This is actually a magnetic uh, piece here. I was actually lucky to not need the magnet. I had really good, got lucky with my aim here in the, in, through the attic, uh, through just a small hole. Uh, but what we're going to be doing here is uh, I'm going to now uh, tape the cable to uh, our, label the cable, tape it to our fish rod, and pull it up and take it over to the rack or uh, medium where all this is going to be located. We are rerouting. Right now, everything is routed to a closet and it uh, is not done very well. Uh, so we're going to be rerouting to the rack in the media room where it should be and uh, have a, a Rackness 700, uh, 310 uh, router as well as a uh, 210 um, switch there so we can power all the pieces. We're going to have a, six, um, a 16 port PoE switch or PoE powered switch in the can that's in the, in the closet because all that's going there is just the cables. There's no sense in rerouting them. There's already, a, we're gonna run a cable from uh, the rack to that point so that we can uh, utilize all that uh, and all the cables, so all the cables in the house can be live. So I'm gonna get to work on that and show you the process. So getting my tape nice and tight around here, uh, still flexible, but uh, that way um, it's not gonna get caught on anything, it's low profile. Um, I don't, I know some guys like to use electrical tape. I mentioned before in our videos, I don't like using electrical tape. It gets real gummy, it's hard to work with. In an attic, if you're, or anything, if you're needing to break it apart, uh, it's really difficult to break apart electrical tape in a bind. Uh, and then you end up having to cut it and things like that, which then can compromise uh, very expensive HDMI cables or other things like that that we don't want to do. So, painter's tape, uh, in my opinion, is very uh, good to work with. Yes, you can tear it, however, it is still very strong. Um, and it, if you want to have a little bit stronger, you just put another layer of tape on it. So we've got our cable labeled. It's taped to our fish rod. I'm going to go up to the attic and pull it through.
All right, so we got a really old JVC projector here. The bulb is going out on it. So uh, instead of having an old projector and just spending the money on a bulb, customer wanted to upgrade uh, to a newer projector. So we're doing the DLA RS540 uh, from JVC. Uh, it is an E-ship projector. It's not true 4K, but it does yield a really, really nice picture. Come around here. So uh, over here, we've got the equipment rack. Uh, we're going to be pulling this out and uh, redoing everything. We're putting a UPS in for uh, the uh, networking and all the other equipment. And we've got, um, uh, we're going to have the new receiver. We've got a really old uh, Pioneer Elite receiver, putting a new Denon 3600H and a Rogue and some other equipment. All right, guys, so you can see the finished product here. Uh, on the top, we've got the Arachnus 310 router. Uh, we've got a 210 eight port PoE switch. Uh, down here, we've got the EA1 with a Roku Ultra and a DirecTV Genie. Uh, we've got a Blu-ray player. We have a, a, new, a, a Denon 3600 or AVRX 3600H receiver, an old monster a power condition they have, and uh, a um, UPS from Triplight that we've added in there. Uh, on the back, um, I'll flip around so you can see that. All right, so I've got the rack all done. This is a big bird's nest in here. Um, got other cables, a little bit better managed and routed here. But you can see we've got a new watt box, the six outlet watt box, the 800 series. Got the Blu-ray player. Um, then we've got the Roku and the DirecTV box and the EA1 from Control 4. And then we've got the Ractus 310 router and the um, 210 A-port switch. We got the new uh, Denon 3600H uh, receiver uh, and a new UPS down at the bottom. So we've got, uh, we also updated their old, uh, about 15 year old JVC projector. Uh, we put up uh, the um, DLA RS540 projector here. Uh, it's the uh, entry into the, uh, S, uh, excuse me, the DILA line from JVC. This is actually a, see this here, THX certified, uh, ISS certified projector. It's a fantastic projector. Um, this is, a, it's an E-shift projector, however, it, uh, it just does a fantastic job with the contrast and colors uh, as well as resolution. It does accept 18 gig signals. signals. Uh, so we've got a, a Roku Ultra here, which uh, does actually, um, let me show you here. It is taking a zoom in 4K signal. Uh, as well as HDR, so you can have whatever the latest thing you have here is. So uh, we can, using the uh, SR260 remote, you can see we're on the Roku. If they wanted to change something, they can hit watch, and they can change from any of these things here. So while we're on the Roku, you can see that the back button will take you back. You can scroll up and down to all of your uh, apps and just select over. It's very, very easy to use in a flawless integration, or almost flawless integration. Uh, so we can switch over to we're going to change we can hit watch and we can go to direct tv automatically switching the inputs on the receiver turning on the direct tv box and uh, getting all of that uh, switched over so now we've got the direct tv box here 
Uh, and this is actually, you know, there are some lights on this room. It is not dark. It's dim, but it's not dark. And you can just see it's still a great picture. I'm not sure how well it's coming through on the camera, but it's still a great picture, even with some lights on here. So you can put on the game. Um, you know, it's, you're, it's surprising how bright these projectors are, even though they're not rated as high as uh, Lumen Output as some of the other brands. It still gives you a really, really uh, nice picture. So um, you can uh, change channels with the remote. Um, you want to hit guide, you just hit... Uh, from here and hit guide pulls everything up the direct tv boxes are inherently a little slow but uh, you know you can adjust everything with this um, they also have the control for blu-ray player as well as xbox so when we're done for the day all you have to do is click off you if you notice i didn't click off between going from the direct tv to the roku i uh you just hit watch right here and you scroll down and select whatever it is you want to watch you only turn it off or hit the off button when you're done for the day we're done watching so we're going to hit the off button here and it turns off the projector here you can hear the motor for the lens cover going uh, turn off the receiver the direct tv box and everything else so i'll take you over show you some other stuff that we did around the house we actually uh, put in a this is just a mess in here before um i always forget to take before and after shots um but uh so this is a mess in here before um, we've got all this cleaned up and bundled together. Um, all of the uh, cables around the house are here. This is a uh, Arachnus. This is a 110 Slimline 16-port um, switch. This is actually PoE powered with a PoE pass-through. So, zoom in here. Not sure if we're able to see it here, but uh, we've this is the PoE input. So this is actually going back to the rack. Uh, and media room and then this could be a poe out so if you had another switch or a camera or anything else you wanted to power here you could do that or you can even uh, use an ea controller um, ea1 that's poe powered right there so uh, we've got all the the uh, lines run here um, and uh, we can go ahead and close this up and lock it up in the backyard uh, we've got an uh, all-weather rated this is a uh, the Arachnus 700 series outdoor access point. There was actually a coax line that was run there um, and uh, through wall plates there for TV. Although there's no electric uh, here, there was a place for a TV out here. What we were able to do is I was able to come in the attic and drop it down into that box and we were able to mount the, the, the uh, access point to the panel or to the uh, gang box so that we didn't actually have to uh, run any additional lines down, cut any brick, do anything like that. And it looks uh, great out here. Uh, this is, again, running all the way back up to the media room on the other side of the house for power and data. And uh, the customer gets, you can see it's a large yard. Let me zoom out. As you can see, it's a large yard, and customer gets fantastic Wi-Fi all around the property here. So in the game room here, we have one 700 series access point. Uh, we have it uh, perfectly in line here, so you don't even notice it. Uh, it's, it's lined up perfectly with the uh, air duct. Uh, down on the other side of the house, we have a, another access point over here, over on the other side. Um, downstairs, uh, we'll, we have mounted a 75-inch uh, TV and updated that as well. I'll come down to show everything we did there. All right, so downstairs, we've got another SR260, which controls uh, equipment down here underneath the cabinet. And a really old Yamaha receiver and a 55-inch uh, Sony TV. So we've got some stuff down here. We added in a uh ac infinity is the t uh eight i believe um that actually is, uh, vents out the back um there's some equipment on top of that there uh direct tv boxes um so we didn't there there's three versions of this there's the uh up ventil ventilating so it passes air through uh front firing as well as rear firing um so we've attached that there and under here they've got a sonos connect and uh, Triad 1. So the Sonos Connect, so they can listen to their Apple Music. Um, and then we have the Triad 1 for their music. Um, there's uh, nine, uh, I believe it's nine off the top of my head, streaming services that are native, all the majors, uh, with the exception of Apple Music, which I believe is only native to the Sonos products. Um, but it does Pandora, Amazon Music, SiriusXM, Napster, all the majors there, as well as Tidal, um, TuneIn Radio, etc. Um, we've also... Uh, they had some really old fan system down there, um, so we added another uh, AC Infinity fan there, and then there's another one in this side, so it's pulling air all the way out of the cabinet. They had really old fans, the bearings were going out, and you could hear the whole thing vibrating. They're on right now, and you can't hear it. 
So uh, we didn't update any of these speakers in this room, but what we did do, let me come back over here and show you, we've got a 75 inch, this is the Sony XBR uh, 75X900H. So 75 inch TV, customer wanted to maximize uh, the space here. Uh, so we've got, uh, like I said, they had a 55 inch here, so we've gone up 20 inches uh, in screen size. That is, of course, measured diagonally, but uh, it is now perfectly in line with the uh, edges of the cabinet uh, all around there. So it's exactly what they wanted. We actually have it on an articulating arm uh, mounted to the wall behind the cabinet because that's about a foot and a half that it's uh, hanging out, coming out of the wall, or about a foot coming out of the wall. So uh, we've got that hanging there, and it uh, fits perfectly right there. I'll actually come right, around so the master bedroom. Uh, we've got... Uh, another SR260, you can see it's, uh, we've got a main bedroom. Uh, so all the SR260s uh, are labeled for the room that they're in. It's very convenient so you know exactly what you're doing. So you can hit uh, Watch and Roku, or excuse me, DirecTV, and it's uh, going to turn on the TV, as well as, uh, again, we didn't upgrade everything in here. Customer already had a bunch of stuff in here, but uh, got the old Pioneer receiver, added a Roku Ultra, um, and racked a port switch. We actually uh, wired here as well. So we wired, go ahead and mute this. So when you mute it, you just hit the mute button and voila. So we actually wired all the way up the wall here. There's an external wall. Uh, there's some spray foam insulation out at the bottom. It's a little difficult to work with, but uh, we were able to get it all the way up and ran all the way back to that panel that we showed you a minute ago. Um, so that we wired everything there so that this could be hardwired. Um, there was wiring through a lot of the house, but not uh, everything. So. Uh, we've got that there. Customer can, uh, again, easily control everything. They want to go to Roku and automatically switches everything over. This is the TV that was actually in the living room. So you can see it is significantly smaller. Uh, but, of course, the Roku and seamless seamless uh, connectivity here. So you go to YouTube, Netflix, whatever you want to do, and it launches flawlessly right there. So you can come and search and find your media systems all right guys thanks for watching uh, if you're looking for a system like this and you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area please contact us at 972-905-0556 or email sales at puremediasystems.com uh, you can see our phone number right here in the van or I'll have that down below right here uh, as well as in the description below uh, please don't forget to subscribe, show your support, subscribing, giving us a big thumbs up and uh, hitting that bell icon, commenting really helps the algorithm uh, and it really so helps support uh, us as a local business. And, uh, you know, subscribe to your other favorite channels. It helps all of us. So if you're uh, wanting a system like this, again, please contact us. Uh, we can ship most of these products uh, nationwide. Uh, so we can, you know, Klipsch, Sony, JVC, all these other products we can ship directly to you. Or again, if you're in the Dallas area, we can help design a system just like this. Uh, we can, we do work with uh, existing equipment that you already have uh, as best as we can. Certain things we uh, updated like the 4K uh, TV and JVC projector, uh, new receivers, etc. And we were able to accommodate for the, the customer's needs and their budget. Uh, look forward to getting the next video up, guys. Thanks.